get AFXs. So it's confession time. For the past five and a bit years, I've been lying to y'all. You see, I'm not actually a handyman, even though I try, and I'm certainly no professional woodworker. Would you believe at university I studied a Bachelor of Advanced Analytical Chemistry specialising in Forensic Science? Yep, that's right, CSI stuff. And after completing that degree, I began working for a startup education company who'd put together a fake crime scene and turned it into an educational experience for high schools, basically encouraging 13 to 16 year olds to take up chemistry, physics and biology in their senior years of study. Call it an insurance policy for high school science teachers. So straight out of uni, I got to spend a year traveling around Australia, visiting hundreds of schools and teaching thousands of students about the joys of science using a cool forensic -y theme. Over the next decade that I worked for the company, Education Interactive, here's their logo, you can go look them up if you happen to be a teacher. I would spend two years traveling around Australia from coast to coast, and two and a half years working in the United Kingdom and Ireland. It was a great way to spend my 20s. I got to see a lot of the world while being paid to be overseas, living in backpacker hostels. Fun fact, in 2012, I was Hostel World's Backpacker of the Year because I stayed in over 150 backpackers in a 12-month period. Yay me! And after having spent those many years teaching the programs, I then turned my hand to managing and running the company. Our original program was called A Case of Identity. Brownie points if you can get the reference for that one. Comment it below. I would initially develop another high school program called A Case of Conspiracy, and then we expanded into primary schools, younger generation, looking at 7 to 11 year olds or thereabouts, and I made two programs, A Case of Discovery and A Case of Emergency. However, after 11 years, I had run my course at the company, and it was time to move on to my current employment with the New South Wales Government. But I never lost passion for the company, and I've kept an eye on them over the years. And now as they continued to expand, they needed another set of equipment for the primary schools. So this allowed me to fulfill a dream that I had back when I worked for them. Don't you love it when the undercoat fairy comes and joins you in the workshop? Mm, zero gravity paint drying chamber. A zero gravity paint drying chamber. Yeah, that's gonna win me the next Nobel Prize. So humans finally break the laws of gravity on Earth and the best application? is painting so that we don't have to stand things up on edge like this, wait for them to dry, turn them over, and then give them more primer. You see, while I did all the design and management work, back then I didn't have the tools, skills, or experience to actually bring to life the things that were in my head. All these educational displays I could design, but not make. Well, that's changed now. And so when my boss approached me and said, hey, would you like to put together a copy of one of your primary school shows? I jumped at the chance. Not only would this be a well-paying commission, but it would give me a chance to live that dream and put together the stuff that will tour for hopefully the next 10 years. So while I hope you've been enjoying the build process in the background, honestly, it's not terribly complicated. We're mostly making a bunch of rectangles. I wanted to take this opportunity to share with you guys a bit of my history, my passion for science, and putting this out here to show you that you never have to fully close a door on stuff that you wanted to do. One day, it can and will swing back around, and when you get that opportunity, you should grab it. Okie dokie, have you been following along in the background? As you probably noticed, there is a lot of batching out. Yes, the build is relatively simple. However, as I'm doing here on the drill press, making small jigs and finding tool setups that are going to save you time on these incredibly repetitive tasks. These little bits here on the drill press, I had 40 of them to do. And every process that you add, chamfering all the things, or rounding over in this case, drilling holes, undercoating everything, you then times by 40 just for those pieces, and there are a lot more coming. So it pays to think about what you're doing and try and be efficient in your processes, even if they are just a few rectangles. Well, that was pretty much all the woodworky part of this job done, but there were a few more materials to add in, which was great for me, because I don't normally play with these things, and it was exploration. And honestly, trying these new things out is what keeps builds that are very repetitive, like this one, interesting. I got to try a lot of new techniques and things here. This is not wood, this is acrylic, clear plastic, which will be going into a few of the displays too. You can cut it on the table saw, 
but I did a pass from each end, basically a scribing cut on both sides because the blade I had in there was not designed for cutting plastic and it chips out like a mofo. But otherwise your woodworking tools can cut the plastic just fine, it just makes a mess. Back on the efficiencies and ganging up all of the pieces and using the blue tape for extra support as I cut them down with a better suited blade, although still not fantastic, on the Minosaur. These are basically going to form the lenses of some giant slides. We'll whack some botany samples in there and the kids will be able to look at them using a digital microscope. You've got to remember, all this stuff is for rather young students, so everything is fairly simple here. Yes, they're solving a crime, but mostly it's to give them exposure to simplified versions of forensic techniques. Something else fairly special about this build in particular was not only was it nostalgic, but it allowed me to spend some quality time with my beautiful wife. Who, I might say, if it wasn't for me working over in the UK for two and a half years, I would never have met. We started dating while we were both working over there, and that was nearly 12 years ago now. And it was amazing to have her in the workshop on a few different stages helping with this build. Not only plastic, but metal as well, and not just any metal, stainless steel threaded rods. Again, I knocked up a cheeky little jig to cut them down to size. They didn't have to be perfect, I'll be able to adjust them later on. But again, there were 24 of them. Stainless steel is very, very hard and gets rather sharp edges, which had to be dealt with. Don't worry, I had some soft fall under there. And it's back to the homemade disc sander from an angle grinder, but this time I've actually got a grinding disc in there. Taking off the burrs from my cutting and polishing off the top ends. Once the grinder had done its work, random orbital sander, just with some 120 in there to finish the polishing job. You'll see what we do with those later. Each of the programs for Education Interactive have their dedicated colour, and for a case of emergency, that is purple. Having hand painted on the primer, getting to use spray paint was an absolute joy. Cost a bit more per square metre, but hell, uh, it made it so much faster. Massive shout out to Carl Pope, who I stole this drying rack design off. He happened to time his video perfectly for me needing to dry a whole bunch of panels. And oh my goodness, if you saw what we did with the undercoating, having them all over the workshop, this is a vastly superior solution. And it took five minutes, not exaggerating, to knock up this rack. I think I'll make a nice version of it in the future. It's so handy. With a couple of layers of purple paint on and some nice soft feet on the bottom to stop these displays from scratching whatever they happen to sit down on in the future, it's time to install those threaded rods. Now this is a little bit tricky to explain. It's kind of a mix between a separation technique known as chromatography and an old kids game where they split the blocks up. Those blocks will cause me grief in the future, but for the moment these stands, there'll be two of them side by side, and the 12 threaded rods represent different chemicals effectively and the kids will use the blocks to do the separation manually. It'll make more sense towards the end. I'll give you a demo. One of the key design points on all of these displays is to make them as bomb-proof as possible. This means not only having them age-appropriate for the students, but also having them so that the damn things can't be pulled apart easily by little fingers. But for now, the beautiful wifey was back in the workshop helping me once again, and I just used a straight edge to make sure all of those threaded rods were about the same length, doesn't have to be perfect, and then we could secure them down. Looking good. So the stickers were printed for me, and most of them were pretty good. Ended up eyeballing them a lot of the time. And basically these are just the instructions for the kids to tell them what they need to do at each display. Apologies for the dodgy camera work on this one. It was filmed on my phone upstairs and I had to turn the sound off so we don't get a copyright strike from MasterChef. Another new material for me, working with clay. This air dry clay was actually really, really good. Pretty cheap too if you've got kids, great fun to play with. You just leave it out and after a couple of days it hardens up nicely. In forensics, when we have tire tracks, shoe impressions usually, we're going to break out the specialized casting plaster, pour it in and make ourselves some negative molds. So what I'm doing here is creating the negative in which the kids can get Play-Doh 
and they can force them into these Australian and introduced species animal tracks, peel back the Play-Doh, and then they'll get themselves a nice cast. The comparison is very, very simple. It's more demonstrating to them in simple terms techniques that we use in a real crime scene. This was really, really good fun, and they came out really well. I've got five different animals there for them to have a play with. And after I gave about six coats of clear acrylic to the hardened prints to really toughen them up and make them glossy and shiny so the Play-Doh won't stick, they were looking fantastic. I was the most happy with this display out of all the ones that we built. I used a flat sanding panel to make sure that the bottoms of the casts were pretty flat, and then we are going to use some liquid nails to hold them down nice and secure. I put enough on there to hold a brick. These weren't going anywhere. But I wasn't happy with those stickers. They were in two parts. The borders had been cut off them, I think with a pair of scissors. I'm not sure why, but I contacted the boss and said, mate, we've got to reprint these. So peeled off the old ones. Luckily, they came off. And the new professionally printed ones in vinyl looked much, much better. And just a stickler for those sorts of things. You're going to do it. We should do it right. With the casts done, we'll move on to the next display, and that is the aforementioned botany displays. So here's how the clear acrylic is going to come together. We get our samples of a few different plants and sandwich them in between those 40 small wooden handles and the clear acrylic. And again, digital microscope, the kids will get a really nice close look at them. And then I realized that I was missing half of the chromatography display. I'd made the purple stands, but I needed 60, yes, 60, square counters that can be used for the kids to separate and demonstrate the principle that we're trying to get across. That meant using the rather dodgy mitre gauge on my table saw for the first time and training out many, many, many squares of 18mm marine plywood. So again, with the batching out, the numbers just get stupid big, stupid quick. Now I had my 60 squares, they required 60 holes. But at least over at the drill press, I realized I could turn my blower on permanently and not stop in between each one. If I'd been really clever, I would have used the new shop vac, but hey, room for improvement. That also meant 120 reams in reverse with the drill to sand off the edges of those holes. It also meant 720 edges, which I had to gently round over on my incredibly dodgy homemade disc sander on the angle grinder, and 360 faces which needed to be painted by hand because I was lazy and I tried to use spray paint. It didn't work very well and we ended up having to go with three coats of hand painted yellow paint on top of these counters. But eventually we got there and there was one more process which I probably shouldn't be showing on a YouTube video but um well I had a spare threaded metal rod, which was great because a little bit of the paint had sort of crept into that central hole and uh, this, this was the best way I could think of and the most satisfying way I could think of removing it cleanly. And finally we were done with the 60 yellow tokens. But that's not how they work. This is how they work. So there are two sets of them and each set basically has a separation which can be done by looking at the number and counting along the number of poles, splitting them up like this. Then they'll compare that to a chart and they'll get their answer. In terms of transport, we tried to get nearly all of it into these packing cases. They're really cheap from Bunnings for what they are. They've got that pick apart foam in the middle. So it was just a process of working out how I could best store the wooden displays to protect them for many years ahead on the road. A little bit of terrible editing magic and things were starting to look good. I could finally see the finish line. Right, let's run through these quickly. We've seen the chromatography. This is the fingerprint display, simplest one, just a rectangle with a few of these inkless pads. I don't know why they're inkless, it looks like ink to me, but they're called inkless. And the kids get to take their pretty fingerprints. Very fun. 
our beautiful botany samples, and my favourite, the animal track impressions. Here's a bunch of the other kit that I didn't make, but just to give you an idea of how much goes into one of these shows. I wrote, designed, graphic edited all of this stuff once upon a time, and it brings me to the end of this show and what I really wanted to get onto today. Legacy. Don't get me wrong, I love my current job, but the older I get, the more that I think the work I did for Education Interactive, designing these four workshops which have seen hundreds of thousands of students around the world, thousands of school visits, is going to be the most important thing I do with my time from a professional standpoint. When I think of all of the people I might have been able to encourage into a career in science or hell, just studying it a little bit to improve their understanding of our world, that's what at the end of the day seems to be the most important thing that you can do. And on a personal level, as I have a few changes coming in the very near future, it's nice to think back, reflect, and be proud of the things that I've achieved. I know it's all good and well to be humble sometimes, but occasionally you gotta pat yourself on the back. And with this stuff, I think I've done pretty good. Catch you on the next one.